Japan is now in the Bakumatsu era. The influence and popularity of the Tokugawa shogunate is beginning to decline. Several institutes for studying Western technology were opened across Japan, and Western culture was becoming quite popular in the shogunate's capital, Edo. Although Iemachi and the Tokugawa shogunate had caused these circumstances for all of Japan, all of Japan would not simply comply. The Tokugawa shogunate had always been the most dominant clan in Japan, and for 200 years, the daimyo of most other clans, especially in the south, were only tolerating their subjugation to the Tokugawa dominance. They were now furious at Tokugawa Iemachi for breaking Sakoku. In the clans known as the Satsuma Domain, the Tosu Domain, and the Choshu Domain, the samurai class population had snapped. They formed a violent activist group known as the Ishin Shishi, which means men of high purpose. They were outraged by Iemachi's dealings with the Americans, especially because Iemachi never asked for the consent of Japanese Emperor Komoe to open the country. They united under the rallying cry, Sonyo Joy, which translates to Revere the Emperor, Expel the Barbarians. The Shishi would launch a series of assassinations against pro-Western thinkers, scholars, and on Westerners that had moved to Japan. Under this pressure, Emperor Komoe broke the Japanese tradition of staying out of politics and conceded to the Shishi by issuing an order to expel the barbarians on March and April 11th in 1863. The Choshu Daimyo, Mori Takachika, who likely hated the Shogun almost as much as he hated foreigners, followed Komoe's orders loyally and raised a small fleet of warships. He sailed to the popular shipping route in the Shimonoseki Straits. His plan was to follow Komoe's orders by firing upon any foreign ship that passed through the straits without warning. In the thinnest part of the Shimonoseki Straits, Takachika had a coastal battery of artillery placed on the northern side of what seemed to be a choke point for ships that separated the Denura Bay and the Haya Tomonoseto Strait. Further up the coast were fortified cannons on slightly higher ground, known as the Maida Daiba Battery. The third battery of artillery was placed all the way atop the mountain Hinoyama. There was a fourth battery, which was likely on the other side of the straits in the castle Moji. Along the coastal gunnery, Takachika boasted a small but formidable fleet of one bark class warship, one steam powered warship, and one brig, all of which would continuously have been watching the straits for foreigners. The first to respond to the situation was the Dutch government, who sent a 16-gun warship, the HNLMS Medusa, to the Straits on July 11th to find out just what exactly was going on. The Dutch expected the situation to be peaceful, considering the especially good relations between Japan and the Netherlands. But things immediately turned sideways when the Medusa entered the Straits as the ship was met with an immediate attack from the Shogun's fleet and coastal cannons. The Medusa was hit with 30 shells by the Choshu forces. She would turn fire upon the Choshu ships, but there was no hiding the danger the Dutch were in. They soon turned the other direction and fled the Straits at full speed. Around nine Dutch sailors were killed or wounded. The word was spreading to the west of what Takachika and the Choshu were doing. On July 14th, at 4.45 a.m., the U.S. Navy dispatch, consisting of the steamed-powered sloop USS Wyoming under the command of Commodore McDougall, was sent out to put Takachika back in his place. After a two-day voyage, McDougall and the Wyoming entered the straits from the south, anticipating a fight. The battle started at 10.45 a.m. with three shots from the coastal battery, 
as a signal to the rest of the Choshu ships and batteries that the Americans had arrived. The guns on the coast bombarded the Wyoming until the U.S. ship responded with her huge, cutting-edge 11-inch pivot cannons while raging forward deeper into the straits, toward the Choshu ships anchored off of the town of Shimonoseki. The Wyoming plunged itself into the face of the Choshu Navy, passing between the bark and the brig on her starboard side and the steamer on her left. The ships were more than danger close within range of pistol shot of each other. The Wyoming continued to pour fire into the fortresses she passed by before getting stuck on solid ground in shallow water. The Choshu steamer took this opportunity to set a course to ram the Wyoming. The Wyoming fired at the oncoming steamer, landing two shells in her boiler, engulfing her in a roaring explosion. After being unstuck, the Wyoming passed by the remaining Choshu ships, firing steadily with some shots missing the ships and shelling the town ashore. It was likely here where a Choshu bridge sunk under fire. The situation spelled doom for Takachika, as only one of his ships remained. But McDougall saw the damage done to his ship, and couldn't take any more of it. With heavy damage inflicted and taken, the US Commodore ordered the Wyoming to flee the Straits in defeat. Takachika and his Choshu ships won the battle, but only by a hair. Four U.S. Marines and sailors were killed with seven wounded, while the Choshu lost 40 lives that day. The two sunken ships were later salvaged and repaired back into service. In July, the Shimonoseki Straits were bombarded once again by a French ship. This marked the beginning of a series of European bombardments on the Choshu known as the Shimonoseki Campaign. 